Good morning, Year 5, and welcome to your English lesson. Um, so today and tomorrow, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be doing what, as close as we can to a shared write. Now, in school, what would happen is we would take our time, we would write the first few sentences together, um, and then you guys would carry on and we'd keep stopping and coming back for each new section. Now, for this, it's obviously slightly harder for us to do that. So what we're going to do is I have modified the plan for the story of the Pied Piper of Hamlin, um, and I've made a couple of changes. Now, remember that when we do our shared write in particular, we hug the text, we hug the model text as much as possible, and we try and keep most of those details the same, apart from the few things that we've changed. That way we can look back to the model text and see what's effective. We can also add in that extra information. For example, that second description that you guys wrote yesterday, you might want to use that instead of the examples that are in the model text. So let me share my screen and I'll talk you through because there's quite a lot of information on our slides today. Um, first of all, can you have a go at correcting the following sentence? It's got some mistakes in it. So it's editing for the sake of looking for mistakes, not editing necessarily to improve. So Brightman strode through the town with his red coat billowing behind Brightman. Can you have a go at correcting that sentence? Uh, pause the screen and then on the next slide, I'll show you the corrections that I made. Okay, so um, I used a green pen for it. Um, Brightman is a name in this, so it needs to have a capital B, but it's also at the start of the sentence there. Um, strode is spelt incorrectly as is through, so I've gone through and changed them. Uh, with as well, red has got a capital R when it doesn't need a capital R, coat has been spelt incorrectly, behind has been spelt incorrectly, and then because we've already got Brightman up here, I've changed the Brightman down here to um, a pronoun because I think it flows better instead of repeating that name when nobody else has been mentioned there. So hopefully you've got them, and those editing skills are something that will come in really handy tomorrow um, morning before you start carry on writing with it, because it's really useful for us to go back through our work and edit and improve. Um, so here is our initial plan for the story of the Pied Piper of Hamlet, and normally you guys would get this plan um, to have a look at and we'd make it together, but it's slightly different for this. So. For the beginning, we've got our introduction to Brightman, uh, to the secondary characters, so the elders and the children, uh, the main other characters that get spoken about, um, our location, including the year as well. And in the build-up, we find out about the problem. Uh, we found out that the time, town is overrun by a plague of rats. So that's almost a, the first part of the problem, but it's not the problem that ends up being a focus of the story. Um, we find out that the mysterious stranger arrives, they agree a fee, Brightman says that he can lead the rats away, and then he does, he plays his pipe and the rats all follow him. Um, then the problem is that um, the town elders decide that they didn't want to pay Brightman. They decide that they have an offering too much money and eventually they refuse to pay him at all. So Brightman is angry and left. So it leaves that, um, it builds that tension there. We don't know what's going to happen next. Now, what I've decided is that we're going to make a couple of minor changes so that we can try and hug the text as much as possible. Um, so I thought things that have got negative connotations and are linked with plagues. So instead of rats, we're going to go with cockroaches because um, obviously people don't like cockroaches very much and you can have like an infestation of them. Um, and instead of a pipe, I thought we could go for a drum. Now, not a drum kit that is huge and unwieldy but one of the drums that um, you can wear around your neck and just <clears throat> excuse me, play as you're walking. So it's still an instrument that he can play on the, on the move. Um, it's an instrument that most people know. It's an instrument where we can talk about the sound it makes and it can be quite foreboding later on if we wanted to make it that way. So that's the changes that we're going to make there. Um, now for the other two parts, and this is what we're going to be writing tomorrow. Uh, Brightman returns on the day of a great feast to celebrate the rats going, wearing a cloak as red as blood and a mask. So he's changed his attire there um, in the resolution and the ending. He once again plays his pipe, but this time the children will follow the piper into the mountains, never to be seen again. Um, so again, a couple of changes to make there. I thought instead of, um, so we know that we've changed the rats into uh, cockroaches for the story. Um, and to try to make sure that we've got something else changed. Um, instead of the children following the piper at the end, um, I thought we could change it to say that the, all of the dogs from the town follow him. So the town is left without their pets. So 
we tried to make a couple of changes to it because um, this is our innovation stage. And there's a few other bits that I want to share with you. So this is our toolkit for writing a legend. And these are the things that you need to look to be able to tick off. So have you introduced a setting from the past? Have you included front and adverbials of time? Have you included relative clauses to give more information? Think back to your parentheses lesson in um, SPAG as well. How could you use that to help you? Have you described a human hero? So in this case, have you described Brightman, what he's wearing, what he's like? Have you used a wide range of sentence lengths? Have you accurately used speech marks if you can? Have you used show, don't tell to describe that setting? And is there a lesson learned in the story? So do the elders learn their lesson by the end? I've included here the model text for the children of Hamlin. I'm not going to read through it now, but pause it to read through it or go back to our lesson from last Friday if you want to listen to me read it. There's the first part. There's the second part. Let me move my face out of the way. And there's the third part. Um, and I've also included exactly what we would be looking at in school as teachers. So these are the sheets that teachers have so that we know what we are assessing you guys against. So these are all taken from the national curriculum. And these are all things that we would look for throughout the year to be able to say that you're working at or beyond the expected standard. Now, some of these we would need examples of in more than one piece of work. So they don't always lend themselves to everything, but it's a really good way of you guys seeing exactly what I will be looking for when you're writing. Now, there are, of course, other things in your writing that can be really effective, but these are the bits that are on the sheets. So again, I'm not going to read through them, but if there's anything on there that you're not quite sure what it means, um, because this is exactly the sheet that I have, please do email me and ask, because I think it's really valuable for you guys to know what the expectations are and what uh, we are assessing you against. So there is one lot of it. There is the next lot of things to look for. So you can see indicate parentheses using brackets, commas or dashes, just like we're doing in SPAG at the moment. And uh, something else, demarcate sentences accurately throughout using capital letters, full stops, question marks and the punctuation of direct speech. Please make sure that you are doing that throughout, particularly with capital letters and full stops. Uh, and finally, spellings are really, really important. So the year five and six spelling list. If anyone wants a copy of either that or of the year three and four spelling list, please do email me and I can send them over because they're quite useful as just quick fire things to practice quite a lot of the time. Um, and again, I know a lot of you are using computers at the moment um, and we wouldn't need to see joined handwriting in every single piece of work, but it is one of the things that you need to be able to prove that you can do to get the expected standard in year five. So do make sure that you're having a practice of that. Again, if you want to have some handwriting sheets sent home, then please email me and I can send them over. Um, so this is what we're going to write today. We're going to focus just on the beginning and the build up and then tomorrow we'll do the problem, the resolution and the ending. Um, I've left that plan up on the board. You can see that not that much has changed. So innovate, use the model text as a crutch, as a scaffold. Um, and I'll show you again, I'm going to use what I wrote yesterday as a setting description to start myself off. And then I've given you that next part. Not too long ago, you probably wouldn't have liked Hamlin. How can I know this? Well, cockroaches aren't liked by the majority of people and our little town of Hamlin was inundated with them. You can use that as a starter and then you can go on to the next part if you would like. Um, tomorrow we are going to be carrying on with that story. I will do another video just to go through uh, and have the plan in front of you, but much of that video will be the same as what you've seen today. Um, I don't mind if you want to send me the completed stories tomorrow, but if you do send me them in two halves, then I can give you a bit of feedback halfway through, which might be helpful for you as well. Um, have fun writing it. Remember to keep going back to the model text. If people want a copy of the model text to print off, then please email me again and I can email that to you so that you have that as well.